This video is an overview of the Dotto Door Motion Sensor, which also serves as a safety sensor, depending on how you use it. So here are the sensors. They're uh, about 3 16 inch thick acrylic. Here's the sensor inside. It's a little eye that detects temperature. And typically, this represents the door. Uh, and then typically you'd have one on each side of the door if you're using it for a safety sensor. Now, uh, just a brief explanation. This is in the, in the uh, manual on the website. So you have eight zones uh, and the notch on the end of the plastic represents zone one. So you have eight zones and the zones are about six inches this direction and approximately eight to 10 inches wide. So each, each zone might be six inches by eight or 10 inches. So all spread out, if you have all of them on, you might have 80 inches or 90 inches, depending on how high the ceiling is. So this represents the, seat, the sensor mounted on the ceiling, looking down at the floor. So if it were looking straight down onto the floor, uh, you would have a, a range of detection um, about six inches by 80 inches or so. Now, uh, the sensors again have a notch here and that represents zone one, zone one through eight. And I just made a little indicator here, one through eight to represent how this sensor is looking down at the floor next to this door. So if you mounted this in the ceiling, you know, let's say six inches away from the door, you're gonna be detecting pretty close up to the surface of the door and the same over here. So in some cases, you might have one sensor on each side of the door and you can turn on or off different zones. So you may only need zones three, four, five, six, and because let's say seven or eight might be located uh, or hitting something that you don't want to detect. Okay. That's the purpose of the sensor is to be able to specifically target precise zones on the floor, uh, whereas a radar-based type sensor might pick up a large area on the floor. The This thermal imaging sensor picks up precise areas. Okay, here is the uh, control board for it. You have eight buttons and you have one button called the select button. And so the way you program the system, uh, sorry about my finger over the lens, the way you program the system is, is, this is in the manual as well, LED mode status. So you select first uh, A solid or A blinking, uh, B solid, B blinking, so forth. And, in, and at the end you might have all three solid, which indicates which sensors are on. So you could turn on or off up to three. And so if you want two of them on, you would have these two lit. If you want beeping to occur when it detects motion or detects some target that, that exceeds a, a threshold of temperature, you can have the beep on. So I'll show you that here to, uh, so when nothing is selected, you have no LEDs on, on the select LEDs. So you select one, it's solid, Two is blinking, three is, uh, third state is B solid, B blinking, C solid, C blinking, all on blinking means one and two sensors are turned on. If you wanted to turn on three, you just press that button, turn it back off. If you want beeping to occur, you press the eighth one, okay? And then if you want to exit the uh, setup mode, you just press the select button again. So you have, uh, let me point to this with a pen. You have connectors here that go to the sensors. In this case, we only have two connected, A and B. These connect, these cables go out and go to the back of the sensor. There's a circuit board on the back of this, okay? And if you're using the Dotto Door complete system, including a Dotto Door automatic track system, you probably would have the auxiliary input board already built onto this plate and they would already be connected from the output port over to the auxiliary port, okay, where the five volts on this board that's connecting to the dotted door master controller would be powering this system. If you just have a standalone sensor not connected to a dotted door system, this is how you would connect your five volts, uh, ground and five volts, and then the orange and purple would represent your contact closure. So this is just a dry contact closure that, that um, closes upon any detection. So I'll try to do a demonstration here. I'm gonna wave my hand over the sensor 
moving in, a, in that direction towards the sensor and watch the LEDs. As I move my hand, you can see that they light up as I move my hand from zone one all the way to zone eight. And if I did it in reverse, you'd see the same thing. So now I'll go in reverse. I'll go eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, as I move from right to left. Now the same thing would occur here. Uh, I'll leave it up to you to read the manual and understand some of the, some of the uh, modes. For, I'll just give you one example. Solid red on A means view activity on the A sensor only. So you may only wanna, to diagnose an area or diagnose what's, what's triggering the system, you may wanna just go to solid red and view only activity on these LEDs that, that's coming in on sensor A. And then for setup for B, you may wanna go down to solid um, B as well, solid red on, on B to detect what's going on there. If you don't have anything selected, any activity on any one of the sensors is going to show up here, but you, but you won't know which sensor is showing up here because you're not isolating it. So normally that's not that important, but if you're trying to track down something, now keep this in mind. If you want to turn off a zone, go to the blinking, and then it may be that you want to only have let's say a small range in front of the door. That would represent about 20 inches wide by six inches deep, okay? Again, six inches deep this way, and then you would be selecting, if I can show this with the pin, just zones four and five, if you have just these on right here in the middle. If you want a wider range, you can expand it. Um, keep in mind that this is a thermal sensor and it detects changes in temperature. And, and the change in temperature typically is going to be from a, a colder temperature to a higher temperature um, to detect a body or a person or pet or something like that. Um, typically it should not trigger from a warmer temperature going to a colder temperature. However, keep in mind if you open up a door and it's cold outside, it could r brush some or rush some cold air across the sensor and then it can become warm again. So a, a cold temperature going over the sensor becoming warm again could trick it into thinking there was something. So the trade off for this type of sensor is you get very precise zones on the floor, very accurate and very, very um, localized precision zones on the floor versus a radar, which could pick up a large area around the door uh, that is not as predictable. So, but the trade off is that you may get some unwanted you know, uh, triggers from something like a cold air if you open up a door, or if you put this too close to a heater element that's, that can blow air over this, this sensor, you may get some triggers from, from a, a heater. So try not to have this next to a heater or, or um, air conditioning duct that could blow over it. Okay, so I will demonstrate again. If you watch the LEDs, you can see how they trigger. All right, the manuals at, at dotodoor.com uh, that has a, a, a lot more information on the manual. Look under downloads and click on motion sensor. And if you have any questions, uh, shoot an email to sales at dotodoor.com. Thanks.